Greetings, brethren and uh, sistren, wherever you are. Welcome back to the Rehone Podcast. Now, here at Rehone, we like to do things regular as clockwork. That's why I guarantee you'll get a podcast every six months without fail. Only kidding, of course, but um, the more observant amongst you might have noticed that uh, I'm not exactly regular. But there's actually a reason for that, and the reason is, well, I'm on a journey to becoming more proactive and more highly functional, as I'm sure you might well be. And also, I've been working on the secrets to turning low-functioning behavior into high-functioning behavior. So, basically observing my own uh, shoddy behavior and working out or hacking how I can turn that behavior into something better. And I have to say that recently I have been a lot more successful than in previous times. Now, it's not so easy to turn your life around because the habits you're born with or you develop through childhood and adolescence tend to stay with you for life. Now, you better hope that those habits are good, the habits your parents gave you, because most of us, in fact 98% of us, will be on autopilot throughout our life. Now, we could get into predestiny versus free will here, but we'll save that for a different episode. Basically, predestiny, as you understand, is the fact that life is a movie that's already been filmed, edited, and cut, and produced. So, you know, from that perspective, you really have no choice in life but to follow the path that you're on. Free will, of course, would suggest that you can actually make choices. Um, If you've seen the movie Sliding Doors, then you will understand. It's a good film, actually. Um, Gwyneth Paltrow, um, basically, there's a Sliding Doors moment um, where she misses the train or she gets the train. And the film follows the two different storylines but the storyline is bifurcated at that point so it divides into two so here at rehone we call that a divergence point now learning to recognize these divergent points is essential to changing your habitual behaviors because at any given moment in the day you might come to a divergence point and you can make one of two or even more decisions You might choose to lie back on the sofa and scroll through Twitter and be a couch potato. Or, if you had the tools at hand, you could actually decide to do something much more productive. And as an aside here, we'll just distinguish the two. When you lie on the sofa, scroll through Twitter, you're actually getting those little micro dopamine fixes. So you've made a choice that actually, I lie on the sofa... And, you know, have a bit of pleasure. Whereas, if you're going to do some work, or do something productive, or call a friend, or help someone in need, whatever you choose to do, the mind is basically associating that with a lesser type of pleasure. Or even associating it with hard work. Therefore, if we're following habitual patterns, if you're anything like me, then you'll follow the lie back on the sofa and scroll through Twitter. So how at this divergence point can we make the better choice for ourselves? Well, we can do it through knowledge for a start because ancient wisdom suggests that one should not actively pursue uh, pleasures just for their own sake. Actually, we're taught to do that by society, but really that kind of endeavour ultimately leads to misery. Now, paradoxically, if you put some work into something, or you do something for somebody else, or you get productive for a while, like tidying your house, or cleaning your car, or whatever it is, or something like going to the gym, now after that, you're going to feel a natural sense of happiness. And that sense of happiness is not tinged with disappointment, or regret, or thinking that you're wasting your life away, which is what scrolling through Twitter would do. And as we see these days, um, all the YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, they've got these kind of quick fix videos 
so you don't have to concentrate too long and you can actually waste hours on these things. Now I hope you're not uh, in that grip of addiction from scrolling on those things because I've managed to defeat it myself. So I want you to visualize at this divergence point, you will visualize the slightly tinged happiness of scrolling on your phone and wasting time. And in the back of your mind, you know that you're wasting your life away. Now I want you to have a look at the other option and think, hmm, if I go through that and then at the end I am going to feel that pleasure. For instance, if you go to the gym, you'll feel the endorphin rush at the end and you can convince your mind to go for that pleasure instead. And really understand how your life is at a divergence point so you can really see how your free will is active at all times. Coming to this point of understanding is very helpful in life. Anyway, that's just a taster and we'll discuss that more later. But these decisions are extremely important and I call them micro decisions. They're small decisions that can really affect your day. I want you to imagine that you're on a boat and you're at the wheel. And of course boats have rudders. And those rudders are very sensitive, so the slightest, if the rudders get slightly turned, the boat will go in a completely new direction. It will curve off course. Now, in order to get the boat back on course, you'll have to turn the rudder the other way. But as soon as you've gone off course, and the more you go off course, the more hard work it is to get the boat back on course. Because, of course, unless it's a flat ocean with no wind, then the wind and the tide of the ocean is also going to have an effect. I would call these external circumstances. Um, we live in a world where there are so many external circumstances that to lessen the variables within yourself is, I would say, essential. Now, what does it mean to lessen the variables? It means to be prepared to meticulously control your own life as much as you can. Rather than endeavour to control other people or situations, you must become a self-controlled person. You must live in a tidy environment. Everything must be where you know it should be. This is called preparation, organisation. And I would hazard that to be a liberated and happy person, organisation of your own life and your own endeavours is absolutely essential. Of course, some people think that the hippie lifestyle, just to let everything go, woohoo, hey, everything's cool, man, um, that's the way to liberation, but actually, paradoxically, it's not. You see, these micro decisions to <clears throat> put something back where you found it, or close the drawer, or close the door, they can have huge impacts. Just as we let the rudder go off course, and the ship steers into a completely new, and maybe undesirable destination every little decision we make is either keeping us on track or taking us off track now for instance suppose I go to bed two hours late uh, one night now, that's a micro decision I've made the decision not to go to bed at the right time the next day I wake up groggy I get caught in a traffic jam because I'm a little bit late I'm late for work. Um, this is a very vague example. The boss um, chastises me. I get in a bad mood. I go outside at lunchtime, uh, smoke a cigarette, and I go to the cafe and I'm rude to the person that serves me because I'm stressed out. Um, she's got a boyfriend um, who doesn't like the way I spoke to her and he punches me on the nose. Now I have to go to hospital. <laughs> Can you see how these... From just one decision, going to bed too late, can have a, a, what would you call it, an ever-increasing effect. And that's what I mean by the rudder. If you're not keeping, you, keeping yourself on track, then life has a way of coming in with the wind and the tide and actually pulling you vastly to somewhere you don't want to be. And that's called playing helter-skelter with your own life, with your own existence. Now, the wind and the tide is going to come anyway. But a self-controlled person 
is more equipped to deal with the wind and the tide because they've got the hand firmly on the rudder. So what I'm saying is, is these micro decisions have a massive, massive effect um, on your life. And now seeing as this is a taster plate of a podcast, and by the way guys and girls, I do hope to be doing more of these um, uh, much more regularly. So uh, please tune in and listen to my mumblings and my ramblings. Now in other news, um, I had a sore on my lip uh, recently, and I found that when I ate salty food, it aggravated it so much, it was very painful. So recently, the last couple of days, I have put no salt whatsoever in my food. And actually, it's not too bad. So I had some baked beans and some cheese on there, but usually I'll put a nice big handful of salt in there. But no. And that was really great. I've realised, well actually, experts say if you want to lose weight especially, then reduce your sodium because sodium is what retains the water. Um, And a lot of excess weight is, especially for men, water. And in other news, what with all this so-called COVID going around the world, um, apparently it came from a bat in Wuhan or something. Um, Sounds like a bit of a story uh, to me. But hey, that's just my opinion. But it's winter here in the UK and the protocol here is to actually survive winter and thrive through winter rather than saying oh it's miserable everyone gets ill in winter oh i've got a cold i've got the covid i've got the flu why not keep yourself healthy um it's quite easy you can have uh, honey and lemon in warm water ginger powder echinacea Uh, you know what to do i don't need to teach you to suck eggs have a glass of orange juice it contains vitamin c You know all these things, so the best thing to do is to choose to do these things. Now, when you make these definite choices and you commit to them and you have some conviction, that's when they start to do you good. So that's the message today is have a bit of conviction and make these right choices. And okay, guys, well, I hope to hear you or be with you in the next podcast. Take care for now.